Two months ago, I started a new Unity project, one that is more ambitious than any other I've done before. The goal to create a survival game. I know, I know, it's very original. No one has ever made a survival game before. For handling the multiplayer, I decided to go with Mirror, an open source solution. This means that apart from server hosting, there won't be any cost on my hand. The only downside? I've never made anything multiplayer before, so I guess study awaits me. After spending a week just studying up relentlessly on multiplayer and Unity, I felt I was ready to take the plunge and actually begin programming. First. I needed a simple player controller. To do this, I split movement to a number of states, walking, running, falling, override, crouching, and prone. By having states like this, it makes it much easier to implement more unique actions like driving and climbing ladders at a later point. Luckily, a past game of mine had a very similar movement system, so I could just use the old trusty Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Getting the movement to work with multiplayer presented a couple difficulties. But after some research, I was able to finally properly understand how everything should work out. Movement is a pretty standard affair, although at a later point I'll probably add client side prediction to prevent exploits. To finish up the movement, I made sure to add a stamina system, and of course the classic food, water, and radiation, typical for survival games. Next up was making one of the most difficult things I've ever programmed before, a complex and expandable inventory system. For my game, I really wanted to look at expanding the capabilities of an inventory and innovating in a couple of ways. To do so, I looked into combining a classic stack system as seen in Minecraft with a more Tetris style system seen in games like Escape from Tarkov. I personally love Tetris style inventories as it creates gameplay out of inventory management, but also wanted to aim to fix some of the drawbacks it typically presents. The biggest of which being balancing of space. If you need a lot of small items, there's going to be a big chunk of your inventory occupied. To complement the system, I also decided to make a dynamic hotbar that expands on how much you can fit in the slots. This should help encourage more thought being put into loadouts rather than the standard rifle and pistol. Unfortunately, doing this hybrid system did present some challenges. For one, programming was pretty tough. The amount of edge cases that arose caused me so many headaches that I even had to completely recode the whole thing at one point. There was even a bug that crashed the game. Screw you, Stack Overflow exceptions. After a lot of work, I was finally able to come up with something that I might be able to call a good system. It works kind of like a folder in an OS. There's a holder class that stores a number of slots. This allows dynamic expansion of the inventory through different clothing items and say backpacks. Then each slot stores within it the item and a state of either occupied or unoccupied. An occupied slot can also be specified as a sub-slot in which an item is taking up more than in one inventory space at a time. Then each item holds a list of integers referring to IDs of items stacked within it. Unfortunately, the system does pose some issues. Stacking items means durability cannot be saved due to the saving of just one integer value in the stack. Also, I cannot figure out a way of having a nearby items pickup screen without issues to do with stacking, like having across the room items stacking on each other really weirdly. Luckily, my system does allow easy adding of new items which can allow potential for modding capabilities. To finally round out the inventory system, I made sure to set up a clothing system for the character. It works pretty great, except for some annoying clipping on the character, so I may have to rework how I render the clothes. Also, to get a 3D character in the UI, I've got a bit of a suboptimal solution, which involves rendering a completely separate model of the character to a render texture. After programming a satisfactory inventory system, I decided to go off and do some art. I model a lot of items in Blender in a low-poly art style, which allows me to make new things in a reasonable amount of time. Also, with some items, I made sure to make some animations, which can be used at a later point 
With the pistol, I actually made the reload animation three separate times until I actually was satisfied with how it looked. I also managed to save on time by taking some old items I had modeled for a prior game of mine and just retexturing them so they fitted in more with the low poly style. Next on the agenda was actually having items be able to be used by the player. So, after wrangling a bit with my hotbar system, I managed to get a de-equip and equipping working correctly. Next, I started working on the first item type, guns. As I wanted a more realistic system for guns, I first started on working on a very realistic magazine system. Essentially, each magazine stores its own bullets in it, and so by reloading, you're not actually spawning new bullets from a magical pool, you're actually changing a specific magazine item. As well as this, because of how my stack system works, each magazine can have a number of different bullet types stored within, so in theory you could have things such as tracer rounds at the end of a magazine. To complement this, I, inspired by Crisis, decided to go and make a similar attachment system. Each attachment modifies values about the gun, such as damage and range, although I did have some troubles getting silences and magazines to work as they actually change animations and sounds in the weapon. After getting those working as the backbone of the weapon system, it was time to get started on the most important part, shooting. I wanted to have a realistic type of shooting with bullet drop and bullet time. Unfortunately, this didn't prove to be as simple as just adding force to a rigid body bullet. You see, objects update their position every frame, so with a small object, there's a chance that it updates after a rarity having gone past what it's meant to collide with. This means that collision never even registers. There are some solutions to this problem, like raycasting from the last position of the bullet to the current position, but this is not only unperformant, but also maintains some of the problems with using rigid bodies, such as a lack of repeatability and reliability in movement. Instead, I decided to work on a much more complex but better system of manually calculating the trajectory of each bullet. To do this, I use these two equations. These equations describe the motion of projectiles on a 2D graph. By taking that 2D graph, I can then apply it in 3D space using code. Now, with an array of points throughout space, and a function for time, I can rate cars between each position over time and accurately calculate hit detection. Unfortunately, this did have the problem with having no visual feedback to your shooting, so I created a sort of fake bullet of sorts, which follows the trajectory of the real bullet. After working out some kinks in the system, such as lack of reliability in Unity's vector3.angle and quaternion.angle, leading me to have to calculate them manually, I managed to get everything repeatable, reliable, and most of all, pretty satisfying. Then, in order to really sell the shooting, I added dynamic weapon sway and recoil. Not only that, I used animation curves to have a recoil pattern for each gun, say in Counter-Strike for example, so you can master each weapon individually. And using Unity's particle system, I also made hit effects for various surfaces for when you shoot them, which I reckon turned out pretty cool. Of course, you can't have a shooting system without a melee system, so I shamelessly stole some of my prior code on the game I'd made to get a janky but functional system. Then after some refactoring, I managed to have what I reckon a pretty well working system. Essentially, each weapon has either a light or heavy attack, and some, the one-handed ones, can be thrown. Unfortunately, throwing is a bit chunky at the moment, and I'll have to work out kinks in the future, but it works well enough. To round all these systems out, I assembled a bit of an audio system. Making audio in multiplayer is, unfortunately, not quite as simple as calling the play function. If you do so, other players won't be able to hear what noises you made. So instead, I made a system of bringing audio sources from a pool by command sent from each player. 
To test it out, I fashioned a dynamic footstep system where on different surfaces the footsteps sound different. Then I used some weapon sound effects and modified them in Audacity to create a fairly satisfying shooting sound for the pistol. Finally, I worked on some more miscellaneous tasks, such as improving the default UI for multiplayer games. Normally, this is atrocious looking UI that shows over everything, so I just quickly mocked up a nice looking one. In the future, I'm going to have to completely rework it though, so I can actually get a server browser working, but that's a problem for a future me. On the topic of UI, I also made sure to improve some other aspects such as the resources UI, which now looks a little more original. Finally, I started working on a crafting system, which I have not finished yet, but is in enough of a state where you can have item recipes show up in your inventory. And that about wraps it up. That's what I've been working on the last while, and I hope to see you guys next day. Well, where? Much more progress will hopefully have been made.